How to play Star Trek cards. Star Trek cards are broken up into different kinds of cards. We've got the personnel and ship cards is one type. Equipment cards, interrupt, event, dilemma, mission, and artifact. So this is a very quick tutorial on how to play the game. Step one, you need to establish your game board. And that is what you do with the mission cards. You got planet, planet, planet. There's planet and space mission cards. A space mission card you cannot beam down to, but the planet you can. The goal of the game is to earn a set number of points. You can decide it or you can go by the rules, 100 points or 200 or 500 or whatever you want. Uh, if you can see here, beating this mission will give you 30 points. Here's uh, how you do it. You need to get your ship to here and have astrophysics and youth and a Federation Romulan or Klingon can attempt this mission. Other missions are specific this one is Federation only, and then it requires more medical, biology, exobiology, or Geordi LaForge, which we happen to have Geordi LaForge right here. The Lemma cards make the mission harder to complete. So what you do during the seed, ca seed phase is put the Dilemma cards underneath the missions and this gives you more things to do and then can earn you more points too but that's a little rare normally they don't like a portal guard portal guard an event card is one that you can play only during your turn they all have different things oh this is it here we go, here we go. rescue Rescues are a very uh, rescue card is a very important card. You want to stack your deck with a few of these. It will regenerates a card. Exchange this event for any one card from your discard. So say you uh, got a Captain Picard and he gets killed. Bam! Rescue. Now you got Captain Picard back. Here's a Federation Klingon Treaty. This one allows you to play both interrupt cards. These can be played at any time during the game. Um, I should have gone over this earlier, sorry. But each card has an icon saying, uh, so you can tell just by looking at it real quick what kind of card it is. This is an interrupt icon. Anyways, interrupts can be played at any time. Your turn, their turn, whatever. Okay, so here we go. This is a fun one here. Requires two wormholes, so you need two of these cards to play it. Plays on any one ship just as it begins to move. Play the other card where the ship immediately emerges. Discard wormholes. So you throw one of these down on your opponent, or your own, and uh... Uh, it kind of teleports the ship to anywhere else on the board you want, which is kind of fun. Doesn't work against armadas because you can only play it on one ship. You got to make sure you read these real carefully because if you don't quite understand what it's saying, um, you'll have hours of litigation with your friends. Let's see, we got any more here? Here's a Crimson's favorite card. Rogue Borg. These ones are pretty fun too. You can, uh, if you can get enough of these and then get them, you can uh, take over an opponent's ship with a Krosis card. You need Krosis to do it. Or just uh, kill all the crew and the ship just sits there. You know, whatever. It's strategy based. Oh, one of my favorites here. Auto-destruct. 
plays on any of your own ships, self-destructs, and explosion damage to any other ship at same location with shields less than eight. So that's a fun one. Uh, we do a lot of, or I've done some uh, suicide runs where you just run the ship at the other guys and try to damage them. Alright. Equipment cards. Uh, these are fun, but uh, I don't play them too much. They just give your crew different abilities. Um, one per ship, I think. Uh, here's a... Uh, show you what it does here. Medical kit. Equipment icon. Medical kit. Gives all your officer classification personnel the extra skill of medical where present. So it'll make your officers and doctors for beaten mission purposes. The phasers will do uh, extra strength, which is good with the away team battles. The artifact cards. These are very rare. Um, if you saw the unboxing episode with the uh, where I got all these cards, this was the only one I got out of the whole box. So just tell you how little little rare they are. There's uh, nine. I think there's about nine artifacts in the first set. These uh, artifacts let you do really special things. There you go. Look at that. Immediately play on table. Artifact allows you to take double turns from now on. Nasty. Now how to get an artifact. During the seed phase of the game, you will stick these under planets. You have to beat the planet to get the artifact. Uh, your opponent can know where it is, and they can stack a bunch of dilemmas on top of this, which you'd have to beat all those to get it. So this isn't something you'd have in your hand. Now the final cards is, how do you get to the missions? You need a ship. There's a lot of different ships. This is Miranda class, you know. This ship requires a small star. There's a small star and a large star. On the people, see Jordy here has one star. That's an officer star, I think. And we've got a uh, Yar as a small star. There are no limits to how many people you put on a ship. You can put as many as you want on one, or as little as one. This ship requires one small star, so she could fly it by herself. The ship's broken down to range weapons and shields. Range 6 means, see this planet is a range 3. So the Miranda class can go past two of these planets in one turn. This one here is a range 2, and so on. So the better the ship, the better the range, the better the weapons. The weapons and the shields are designed for battling each other, which we'll get into a little bit. Here is a Nebula class. It's got better range, weapons, and shields, but it also requires two people. You need a big star and a little star to pilot it. It also has a holodeck, which allows you to use holographic personnel on board the ship. Runabout, this is a really good one here, because see, it requires zero, um, so it's pretty much, anyone can fly a runabout. You still need one personnel to fly it, but they're fast, range seven, weapons five, shields five, so this one is almost an even match to the uh, Miranda. Let me see if I got a... Okay, here we go. We got Ensign Callaway. She has no star. So she could fly that. You can also have an officer fly it. Or whoever. It doesn't matter. Uh, 
All right, so we got the personnel. Person, this is the original set. Now they they've done quite a few different sets after this, so there's a lot more different uh, classes to play. But you, the original set came with four playable classes. Okay. So blue for Federation, red for Klingon. Klingons you'll see are typically the strongest. Green for Romulan. And yellow for non-aligned. Now the non-aligned are a little special. Um, they can, I, I believe they can attempt any mission. They can also work with any of the other uh, affiliations. So you gotta, see she's a gold star. So you can have these in your deck while you're playing the Federation and she'll work with her on the ship. So now we'll show you how we would um, start a game, okay? So what we would do, say we're playing, let's say I'm playing the Federation and my buddy's playing Romulan, okay? So we would take turns where we're going to put these down on the timeline. So he'd go first and put the Romulan. You know, I'm gonna make him sit this way. Okay. So your cards face you. Then I'm gonna go here. You know what? Uh, <laughs> here we go. So he's playing the Romulan. I'm playing the Federation. He pulls out this card because he can beat it. You'd have a much bigger timeline. You can also do it in a circle, which is a lot of fun. A bunch a bunch of the mission cards for a big circle have a big fun big game okay so the first stage is to set up your timeline and your planets so we got planet planet it doesn't matter what order space space planet okay second stage is to decide where your outpost is going to be everybody has an outpost okay so here's a federation outpost And you'll see here it's got shields uh, 30. And um, depending on, this is uh, what the outpost does is it's where all your ships and personnel spawn in the game. You can also um, attack your opponent's outpost, and if they didn't have a second one in their hand, they're done. Because then you can't bring any more cards people or ships into the game. Well, they might not be done, but there's no place for them to get on board the ship. So if it, uh, the rules are a little complicated, but it makes sense if you think about it. So I would place my outpost here. He would place his outpost. Here's a Romulan outpost. He's going to put it over there. Can't put your outpost on an enemy card. This is Federation, so he'd have to go here. Typically on one that you would be doing. Next phase is the dilemmas. The dilemmas or the artifacts? I'm not quite sure. You know what? I think it's artifacts are first. We'll just do that. So here's that Horgon double turn artifact, right? So I want to put it on something that would be easy for me to get early on. However, you may not want to put it on something too easy to where your opponent can come and steal it from you. Because they will. So I might want to just stick it on the planet where my outpost is. I know where it is. It's good to go. Your opponent will know where your artifacts are. So we go into the next phase, the dilemmas. So these easy 30 points cards, you'd want to stick some of these harder ones underneath it. So, And you want to do the dilemmas on your opponent's cards. Don't put them on yours. I've done that before and then you have to make, it makes the mission harder. So this is the uh, female love interest and female, te uh, female away team members, random selection, runs off with lover to further plan where she remains can be rescued later discard dilemma 
So by placing this one or the girl one, it'll pull off some of your crew and stop them. All right, so the reason it's called a customizable card game is that you go through all of your decks, pick out the people, the ships, the uh, equipment, uh, the interrupts, and the event cards that you want. Shuffle them up real good and you can decide how many cards total you get. So say like 60 cards. Uh, official rule. There's, you know, you go by the official rules when you start and then we have more fun modifying them a little bit. All right, so you shuffle them up. Your first turn you get seven. Keep them to yourself. Okay, so I got a ship, a person that can fly it, and I got two ships. So during your turn, again, this is a rule modification. You can drag the game out for 15 hours and do one thing at a time, or you can do them all at once. Uh, we usually modify that. If you if you draw it, you can play it. Uh, so I got a ship. It spawns here at the outpost. Got a person. They also spawn at the outpost. Another person and another ship. These ships don't require any star to fly them. Let's see. So, uh, both of these personnel will work just fine for the sh these two ships. So she's going to pilot the shuttlecraft. Mindon's going to pilot the runabout. Both ships are here. <clears throat> now for the rest of my turn, uh, the runabout has range 7. So I go 3 and 5. So this is outside of my range. So one my, my turn I would move here, I'm trying to get to here. So that's it for my turn. I can do both ships too. This is uh, range 6 there. My buddy's turn, he moves. My turn again. Boom. We hit the range 6. Now this one has the archaeology 3, computer skill, biology, leadership, and strength 40. It's a lot of stuff, but it gives you a ton of points. I don't have any of that because I just have, uh, this is their skills, which I forgot to mention. And he's got physics, okay? And she has youth. So they're kind of not really worth anything. <laughs> In fact, you wouldn't want to send them out. You don't want to send your ship out if you don't have enough uh, skills to beat the missions. This one's astrophysics and youth. So that we're close, but we wouldn't get it. So, you know, on my next turn, I'd, I'd get a... Uh, your first turn you get seven cards, your next turn it's like one card, but again you can decide to go draw more cards so you can shorten the game. We found that shorter games are more fun. So uh, we got another youth, diplomacy, mind meld. I would have picked these out better. But anyways, so uh, say I want to put more people on this ship because I don't have enough to beat this, so I need to go back and pick up more people. Same thing in reverse, three and three. So to go back to the moon, I can go two moves because I got range six and that's three plus three is six. They get on the ship. Now they're all on the ship. And then I have to wait for a turn, another turn, another turn, and then my ship's over here. Okay. Now in the meantime, my buddy played this Dideridex class. Oh, focus. Focus. Now, it's got cloaking device and tractor beam. Tractor beam allows you to tow uh, empty ships. Just so you know. Okay, it also requires two small stars and one big star. So you're going to need at least three personnel to fly this. 
So he's over here on his outpost. There's a one big star dude. Here's a small star dudette. And another small star dudette. So all those people are on this ship. This ship is also equipped again with the cloaking device. Cloaking device obviously allows you to cloak. Now it's invisible. Can't be attacked unless you have a card that lets you see through the cloak. There are those cards. You can play them if you want. So they start moving towards your ships. They meet up here. So on their turn, this Romulan decloaks. It's got the weapons nine, and I've got shields two. The uh, battling part of the game is a little complicated. It generally, in the first volley, the ship is damaged, so you turn it on its side. It cuts the range in half. I think it cuts all the stats in half. And then they're allowed to fire back weapons too, but this Warbird's got uh, shield 7. So this ship isn't enough sh to even get through the shields, so it does no damage. The next turn it destroys the ship and kills everybody on board. Now here we ended up fighting on this, so we would have uh, no recourse but to die or run. So say we ran to here. So on your next turn, they follow and they're getting ready to attack. So on my turn, to try to save the crew, we go to here, we beam the people down, even though we're not attempting the mission, we're just attempting to save them. The Dedaret X comes along, another attack, destroys it. Uh, again, with the modified rules, you could uh, tractor beam it back to the outpost, repair it, restock it with your guys you know however you want to play it's a fun game because if you all agree on on your own rules I mean you get the base rules down and then change the rules up a little bit it makes it a lot of fun so now my personnel are stranded on this planet they can't beat the mission but they're all still alive I can take another ship back beam them up to the other ship and save them well, he's a little bit out of range. The Dederdek's there. They really want to kill my crew. They beam down their people. Now you have an away team battle. And the way these work is it's strength for strength, which is in red, like the Klingons. And we would shuffle these um, away team cards. And then you just play them randomly. So the first dude is strength 8, this one strength 5, strength 5, he kills her, so she'd go in the discard. The next one, you got Romulan girl, strength 5 versus Reva, strength 3, Fetty dies. and so on until you finish. This is where your equipment cards would come into play if you had them on. You could uh, say like this one if I was playing Klingon and it would give us uh, for each person else gets an extra two strength. Commutative. So I could have a stack of these and they'd be unstoppable. But, you know, you got to plan for it, so uh, they'd be unstoppable, but it would risk a bunch of personnel and ship cards that I could have had. So whatever your strategy is, there's many strategies to play. And you could play this game over and over again, 100, 200, 300 times, and never have the same results. And you learn something every time. That is the basic rules of the Star Trek cards. Thank you all for watching, and uh, like and subscribe if you would, and share it, I'd appreciate it. Have a good day, and bye-bye.